This is the third precinct here. There are fires burning to the left of it at the uh, wine and liquor store uh, on your left. But back in the back of the precinct, you're hearing people throwing things against the, the walls, against the glass, against anything they can. And now the fire alarm, you'll see it flashing inside of the third precinct. Behind the third precinct, just behind it, is a, a fire that is, is billowing and has been going for a few minutes now uh, really strongly. But you hear people cheering every time they get through one of the windows there uh, with whatever it is they're throwing. It sounds like they're throwing. You can see uh, pieces of concrete. Uh, there's someone climbing up the wall right now of the back of the third precinct, um, kicking the window in, trying to climb up the wall. People are trying to get in the building. We're listening to people say that they're trying to get into the building. There is now a person who, excuse me, sir, there is now a person who is going and trying to get physically into the third precinct there at the bottom of the precinct. Now, at the very top of the precinct on the other side, there were police officers who were inside of that. The fires are getting closer and closer and closer to the third precinct. That is the wine and spirit store, the Minnehaha wine and spirit store here uh, that fire is, is on the fire on the other side. Uh, but you're also seeing now smoke billowing from inside of the third precinct. You see that white smoke billowing outside of that, and you also see that fire alarm going off. Now, we know that there were officers in there uh, not too long ago, so we're no. not sure of the status of how many officers are still inside or if they have evacuated yet, but we do know that just earlier there were officers standing on top of that roof, about five or six of them who were throwing down uh, all Where manner of things to try Where to separate the protesters. But now you are, are seeing, actually seeing smoke uh, that is coming out of the third precinct. Sarah, where so again, are the police? You see the fire? We don't know. We, do, we are not seeing police out here right now. We have been seeing them standing on the top of the third precinct. That's where they have been throwing things down, trying to keep people from, from, from breaching. But now there are no police. There is no police presence. And Josh talked about that earlier. The police presence has gone to zero at this point here outside of the third precinct. How unusual is this? Because now fire has started. Let's let's cite the fire has started at the third precinct. We're watching it be set right now. We're watching it go up in flames right now. Uh, I just wanted you to hear the sound of people cheering as the third precinct appears to be on fire at this time. Excuse me. The, the, the third precinct seems to be on fire at this time uh, mm. with people who are now starting to go closer it's and closer Sarah, to that precinct. Stand by we do not know at this time where the police are. Second, just I just want to, from my vantage point, uh, you can see the pictures up on your screen now of the third precinct, which is on fire. Um, Director, did you tell me it's on, Ellie, it's, a, it's a, the one on the left. It's on the right? Okay, it is the fire that you see on the right. And again, that is the third precinct. And what you hear are people who are cheering in this crowd as this police precinct goes up in flames. Uh, the picture on the right now, the ground picture that you're seeing, that's on the ground. The one on the left is a picture of the aerial shot. Uh, and so as Sarah Seidner had been reporting all evening here on CNN, they... Uh, had tried to breach the perimeter earlier of the third precinct, a fence that they had erected recently to try to keep protesters and rioters out. Uh, that appears to have uh, all been for naught because now uh, this police precinct appears to be on fire. Well, it is on fire. You can see it uh, in the middle of your, your screen there. The concern is with all of this, where are the police officers? Who's inside of that building? Personnel, staff, people who may be in lockup or what have you. We would certainly hope that they are safe and out of that building. But these actions should not be happening. Okay? Again, understand the anger, not the actions. This should not be happening. A police precinct should not be going up in flames, up in smoke. Businesses should not be as well. People should not be cheering. But here we are. This is what is happening. This is what is playing out live for you on your screen, America, on live television, on CNN. Uh, a community that is fed up. We're hearing, I'm not sure if it's gunshots, if it's flashbang, what, or fireworks, or what have you. Let's get back now to the scene. To my folks. 
who are on the scene. You can see the sign there that says Minneapolis Police, okay? So you know it is a police department. Sarah Seidner, talk to me. What are, what are we hearing there? Yes, yes. Okay, so those are absolutely not gunshots. Those are fireworks being fired off by the protesters. We are watching them being fired off directly in front of me. All of those sparkling lights that you see overhead, if you can see that, that is from fireworks. But we are definitely now seeing a fully, uh, a fully on fire third precinct here. Uh, that is clearly um, what's happening there. There have been boards that have been put up outside of the third precinct, uh, and those boards are on fire. But it looks like the fire has gotten even bigger at this point in time. And you can see protesters so close to the fire that they are getting hit with sparks from the fire coming off of that building. Uh, so that is what's going on right now. It is official that the building is on fire. The third precinct is on fire. We do not know where the police are. We see the Minnehaha liquors that is on fire on the other side of the street. We see a fire behind the precinct. We also see protesters throwing fireworks at the precinct and the fire alarm is going on inside of the precinct. Uh, this is a scene that has completely changed from earlier today when things were peaceful dawn, uh, people cheering and more fireworks going off as literally the police precinct is burning. Josh Long Campbell, I want to ask you, uh, because you are our law enforcement expert here, how will police and the fire department respond in this? How do they respond in a situation like this? Yeah, Don, I'm going to take this mask off a second so you can hear me. The police here have made a calculated decision that they're not going to enforce what we're seeing behind us. There is fire that's being set to the police department. As you can hear, that's going on around us. There are fireworks going off, people climbing on the side of the building. They've made the decision that they're not going to stop people from doing that. And I think the reason is they know that any type of police presence here is going to be uh, met with, with aggression and agitation by this crowd that is clearly unhappy. I could tell you we were just three blocks away at a financial institution that was on fire. The fire department was there. They were keeping a distance. They were not moving in to fight this fire. Again, not wanting to put themselves in jeopardy or in danger with this crowd that's clearly agitated. This is this is uh, beyond what we saw there earlier. We have a fire burning. You have people climbing on the building, shooting uh, what looks like fire uh, uh, fireworks and rockets at the building. We looked inside the windows. You don't see police officers there. So I think what would likely happen here is the, the majority of officers who are at this location have probably left for their own safety. There might be a team that's still left behind. We saw people on the roof earlier. But I think, Don, what we're going to see is they're going to let this building burn. You're not going to see officers coming in. They know that the decision right now is you lose a building or you lose lives, potentially. That's the calculation that they're making right now. So they're now, not going to try to control this fire? They're just going to let this burn, Josh? Is that is that what you believe the calculation is? That's what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Don, we've seen no indication that officers or fire department, and I'm scanning the crowd here because there's a lot going on, we've seen no indication that they're trying to either fight the fire or enforce the criminal activity going behind. This is uh, looting. People are crashing through the windows here against, uh, you know, upset the building on fire. I think they're making that calculation that they would rather lose a building than try to incite or inflame the situation even more than it has. What happens after that, we don't know whether they just let the building go and uh, assume the crowd will disperse once they get tired after a number of hours. But so far, we haven't seen police officers staging. There have been no flashing lights. There was one helicopter overhead. It looks like it's now moved away. I think they're just letting the situation play out right now, Don, making that calculation that that's probably in the best interest of the community. And speaking of the calculation, why would one, stand by one second, Sarah. Listen to this. There's yeah. no siren at all. So there's no fire department coming. Last right. night, three or four showed up when the auto zone was on fire. This right. is definitely, as Josh said, a calculated decision. Not a single fire truck is here. Right on. Um, Josh, the, the, and that leads into my next question, if you guys can, can answer this. It, it, it appears that the police department, they must be outmanned in order for it to get uh, to this point. I know that they had asked, at least in St. Paul, uh, for the National Guard to come and help. So apparently the, the department is not big enough to handle this or not equipped to handle uh, this sort of, these sorts of demonstrations. Is that, is that, what's, is that what we're yeah, seeing playing out here, Josh? 
Yeah, Don, if you think about what a police precinct is, this isn't where the police officers hang out all day. This is certainly the headquarters for this area, but police officers are dispersed. They're out patrolling the community, so you don't typically have a large presence of people inside a facility like this to begin with. You look at the crowd, there are hundreds and hundreds of people here, cars lined up, it looks like still trying to get to this location, clearly outmanned. I don't know if they uh, had an influx of officers throughout the city that they would be able to control this crowd right now uh, in, in any successful way. It's just there, there's too much going on here right now. But again, you go back to what is actually inflaming the situation. It's people that are angry with a, the actions of the police. So if you had that infusion of officers here right now trying to push these people back, trying to conduct arrests, I think they know that this would turn dangerous and deadly very quickly, not only for the officers, but also obviously for the people that are here in the community. This is one of those situations that's not easy to control. Uh, if it were easy, this would be resolved already right now. But I assume that the police chief right now, police officials are making that determination that they're not bringing in the crowd control. They're not bringing in the riot police. They're going to you know, lose a piece of property here, it looks like, as this fire continues to move out. Uh, but they're not wanting to obviously inflame the situation even more. Not that they could, Don, even if they had enough officers, because Sarah and I, as we stand here, are just surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of people.